another three questions video. Um, this guy, what's his name? Calls himself the Berserk Misanthrope now, but it used to be something or other or something or other. But anyway, I don't remember. Um, didn't always get along. Uh, didn't exactly love his answers to the questions. So I'll deal with them uh, after I listen to, he's going to ask his questions first, which is, that's very nice of him. Anyway, so we'll do that part first. First question is, what makes your philosophy the philosophy to follow? Uh, truthness. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't think anybody should follow a philosophy, as I've said before. Um, the whole idea of following just doesn't... That just sounds like it shouldn't even exist if you have to follow. I mean, if you can't understand, if you can't um, be part of... Uh, you're either all the front, you know, of equals, or... Yeah, you're just... Um, carrying weapons, I guess, of, of some sort of status. So if you have somebody who vote for it who doesn't know what they're voting for, or they just like the cupcakes you provide for luncheons or something. Um, so, yeah, followers are... It's kind of a lame concept. And um, so the argument is, is why do, why do I think any of these philosophies stick out as being better than all the others or any kind of crap like that and I guess I would always argue that you go to the evidence and um, yeah I, I think um, it's more rational it's certainly appeals to my <clears throat> capacity to say what what do I experience and what do I know to be true in terms of my experience in the context of evolution and all that stuff and there's just no good stories here there's no good functions. They're all kind of negative functions. First you make the negative and then you try to fix it. You know, you get hungry, you get horny. You try to fix these things with solutions that are not anywhere close to perfect. And then you end up making more um, things, more injuries that need correcting, that need band-aids. And so you just get into the business of while you're making band-aids you're causing cuts on fingers and it's just a cycle of violence in a sense a, a cycle of imposition so um put simply i mean there's a simple description of the fundamental philosophy which is it's not only circularly stupid uh it's running a deficit and the logic is you don't do that. When you know you're doing it, you just stop doing it. Running deficits is dumb. Question two. Does your philosophy help the betterment of the commons? Anyway. Uh, I think he said the commons, or the economy, or the commons. Well, I guess the commons. Um, uh, well, there's, you know... The truth is the only servant thing here. The only thing to serve is the truth. It's the only master in the equation. So, in my opinion. So, serving any majority interest, let's call it, um, you have to declare whether it's a, a vital or a, even a legitimate interest. See, now, if everybody had an interest, they all loved bullfighting, let's say. And so you'd say, does your philosophy serve the purpose of spectators watching this abuse of an animal? And I'd say, okay, yeah, sure, I, I, I provide you bulls to torture. My philosophy does that or something. Well, that wouldn't make the philosophy good. It would make the philosophy an aider and a better in a crime. So serving the common... Mm, um, isn't necessarily the right thing to do. The right thing to do is to serve um, value, to serve the value equation, to do the math and figure out how you can optimize the expenditure of whatever resource you have. Now, in this environment, that's not easy to do because you, no matter what your philosophy is, no matter what your intent is, no matter even what the principles are involved, there's hard decisions to make like malaria. Do you spend the money on mosquito nets for the people living now? Or do you spend the money on the hope, but maybe the failure, 
of the cure of eradicating the disease. Hard choices. Uh, we can't know because we're not backseat driving. We're not. <laughs> no, we're not driving in hindsight. Um, we don't get to. See, we don't get to look from the future and backseat drive. Well, we don't get to go to the future and have the benefit of hindsight. There, let's put more articulately. And so we can't know what the right answer was. <clears throat> we can only make best guesses at the right thing to do. But a lot of them, are, they're going to be hard choices. But fortunately, there's not too many hard choices. Most of them are easy choices. Don't make a mess. Nobody will have to clean it up. Question three. What does being free truly mean? Now, assuming that we all agree on the language that we are speaking, free implies just that. <laughs> you can't say that. So, um, so he goes on saying some more stuff like that. Um, he's not really talking about um, the land of the home of the brave and whatever kind of rhetoric of free. And he's not, um, but, but I mean, you can't just say the word free and it means just that. Um, I've already kind of talked about it as a word. It doesn't have any utility outside being a universal word used to describe the release from prison, the release from encumbrance, the release from disease, release from, release from something oppressing. And so we have this universal word for the release from impression. So we can say that Americans are free, but what we're really saying is they're not absolutely free, they're just free from the oppression of a monarchy, or you know, technically not anymore. Uh, oh, a little barren. <laughs> you know, uh, so, shit, this is so disgusting. I mean, I mean, to put the billionaires in charge, just insane. Anyway, um, so we were free of monarchy, but we decided we voted to go back to it. Um, or free from the dictator, or free from blah, blah, blah. And so that's what America is supposed to be, is free from the onerousness of the oppressors and yet we're not free from the religious kooks and, and you know want to tell us all we have to be obedient to their gods and uh, the fascist and the you know the do writers um, who are do wronging um, but in a sense we are free to make bad choices uh, we have the liberty so liberty might be a better word in that context. Um, so, but freedom is just a free is a it's not a, a word that has any utility outside of a context. It's um, the white space is again the the thing that comes before the freedom. The threat is the real conversation. The free thing is not the conversation. All right, um, as to his answers to the questions, uh, so he answered the, the sex one, you know, with the generic answer was, you know, people are thinking more about how to live a, a more useful life, and that really wasn't the question, you know, about how, oh yeah, my life will be more useful because I won't be distracted by sex. The real point of the question was, if you're not distracted by this passion bug, um, doesn't life become more obviously yuck it's like the life of a eunuch <clears throat> you know I mean if you were to be captured by aliens and have your testicles cut off you know so you could be their pet do you really think it'd be a great life I mean yes I mean it'd be a great life if all you want to do is eat and sleep then probably you'll make out okay but me personally I wouldn't live for that. <laughs> Not even a, any chance of it. So it's, you know, but it's okay. I mean, it was a vague question, and so the answer is appropriate to the vagueness. Uh, the other question was uh, the right to die. And he, you know, he went on to a whole bunch of stuff about how there's this very positive propaganda about living. And, you know, the simple answer is yes, we should have this absolute right. 
Um, he didn't get into exactly the depth of his respect for a any objection under any of circumstance. Like, does it really matter if somebody's crazy, or does it matter if they're a kid, or does it, when does it, does, does it matter? Do we have any obligation ever to suggest you're better off alive than dead? Is there any reason to even have that thought as being reasonable? Is there, is there, is there any evidence you can compile that shows that, yes, living works out, you'll survive it? <laughs> yeah, no, you won't survive it. Um, live to die again, you know. <sighs> live and die over and over and over. Not much point. Uh, and the other question was, I don't remember. Let's just go in here somewhere. Maybe he'll be talking about it. But keep that in mind. Your decision shouldn't be moved. There we go. Uh, imposition. So yeah, he did, you know, didn't exactly get to the, the root of that one either. It wasn't just about imposing impositions of creating people. It was um, all the little impositions of our existence. And the point of the question, I guess, was just to get to the thought process where, what exactly am I allowed to impose? I mean, <laughs> you know, that there's a risk, you know, like, like I said, you drive to the grocery store that you might put somebody in a wheelchair. I mean, that's a hell of a thing to be doing. Um, a hell of a game to be playing. And yes, it won't be all your fault. They were on the road or they were in their front yard minding their own business when your car plowed into them or whatever they were doing. But the bottom line is, um, we, we accept these risks. And I guess the argument I was trying to get to was, if you really thought about it, and you thought about the fact that of actually going to the gambling house and rolling these dice for real, and having to actually see it happen, watching yourself, in the sense of knowing it as a, the real permutations, the real... Um, fact of it even uh, it should disturb you I would think I think it would there was, should, should be some cognitive dissidence at the will to accept this fact that just by going about your business you will ruin somebody else's business you will end their business that kind of thing squish a little rabbit under your car tire that was you know busy running home with some leprechaun gold or something anyway um now so somebody on the uh cruddy little website did ask some creepy little stupid questions so maybe i'll deal with those ah i'm coming out Whatever. Uh, who's the master? Blah blah blah. Who cares? I got some questions. Um, <laughs> yeah, this guy was a little bit hostile. You moron! He said I never slept with any men. Fuck off. Okay. Um, for, have you ever slept with another man? Years ago, you admitted you were bisexual. Well, I don't know if I did that. I personally thought you to be some sort of homosexual. Um, yeah, you know, I've just talked before about, um, you know, thinking about sex, you can, you can morph your, your idea of sexual comfort. I mean, I can slowly just take, you know, some perfect woman and I can just slowly add little bits that might not be perfect woman anymore, might be something more masculine. And that, that doesn't overtly scare me or something. That's all I was trying to get to. I mean, you could take a beautiful woman, and then if you did give her a penis, it might not bother me. Uh, I, you know, I mean, it would bother me that she didn't have a vagina, but I just mean, you know, is, is, I'm just saying there could be things that you would change that wouldn't scare the hell out of me. But I can't really imagine myself having a relationship with a man now. It kind of depends on how you shape that man thing, too, you know, I mean, beard, forget about it, you know, lots of, you know, just physical limitations. Um, but, yeah, my point was, is that, uh, and I certainly admit, it, in my youth, my sex, my sexuality was more confused, <laughs> you know, it was more, um, um, 
uh, I just wasn't sure. Um, you know, you know, I was sure about the fact that I didn't really get the whole, you know, I wasn't going to go holding hands and <laughs> I wasn't going to, you know, there was lots of stuff of just, nah, I don't need that part. No, that part's creepy. Kissing or something, you know, I just don't see kissing a man or something. I just, you know, so anyway, but anyway, so yeah, but whatever you want to make out of that, go ahead and make something out of it. I don't care, but no, I've never had sex with a man in any <laughs> overt way, uh, you know, beyond some mental um, gameplay. Uh, when did you first come up with the misanthropic tendencies? I, I don't, I, you know, um, they're, they're not something you come up with, you know, you puke, <laughs> you piece of shit. Um, and I wouldn't even bother with that word. Um, I, I don't, um, they're just, you know, realizations about dilemma. So I'm, I'm, I've already pointed out that from my first perceptions of my existence, I was already kind of complainy. I wasn't, I wasn't too convinced of why do we have to live in an imperfect world. So everything that was imperfect, I would be pointing out. It's imperfect. <laughs> why, why are we? It's sticky. Why is it? St I don't want sticky on my fingers. Why are we eating food that makes my fingers sticky? I don't like that. So yeah, everything I was pointing out, how everything was fundamentally flawed and the answer God wants it that way was pathetic and so I was a little down on the fact that oh so I'm I'm living in a place that's kind of overtly trying to kill me <laughs> and uh, it's going to do it in some kind of like the average way is pretty ugly like you get drowned or you get burned to death or get your legs cut off, you get all kinds of horrible things happen. That doesn't look like any fun. So, yeah, I don't think I was misanthropic. I was, I was fucking scared and horrified and disgusted and revolted. Idiot. And when did you stop wanting to chase the cheese? I never said I stopped wanting to. So, again, that's another perversion of the truth. Where's any evidence that I'm doing that, in a sense? I'm acknowledging I'm alive and I have passion and I have uh, want. I'm just saying it sucks and I'm not going to let it own me. It still owns me, but I'm just saying I'm going to say I'm going to fight. I'm not going to just acquiesce to every uh, impulse and say, oh, just because I, I would like some fried chicken, I'm not going to eat fried chicken. All right, not the cheese around the cocks of other men or the slits of gross pussies. That was a classy add-on. I guess this guy will be worth blocking. All right, did you ever believe in God? No. Uh, I, I mean, I was obligated to try, so I guess you could say I tried. I mean, I did talk to him a bit and, hey, come on, just anything just give me some reason to be on your side and I'll try to do that but you, know, you gotta give me something here buddy something Nothing. you mentioned that you've been aware of it too oh, I guess I should turn the refresh off yes that would be a good idea Gary that's why you put the button there it says auto refresh off and you can hit that yes I did okay Asshole. Um. <laughs> you mentioned you've been aware of it since seven, but I think and know that you're a repeated liar on numerous occasions. Well, now you're really worth blocking. Fuck you. Uh, I personally think you to be some sort of post-Christian. Well, you can think whatever you want. And you obviously, you don't do it with any care or any respect, and so you're just a troll and a liar, a, s a slanderer. Somebody should properly you know, have a duel with you and put a bullet in your useless head because you're a scumbag. Uh, as your moral philosophy is implicit to a surviving imprint of religiosity, are you Jewish? J the Jewish philosophy is eye for an eye. Is there something eye for an eye that I'm preaching? 
I mean, the Jewish philosophy is you find a dead bird on the street, you give it to a poor man. Do I sound and seem like the kind of guy who would try to make poor people sick? I mean, fuck you, cunt. Um, let's see, when's the last time you had sex with a woman? It's kind of a personal question. Now that you've been so rude, I don't think I'll answer. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> yeah. It's been a little while, though. Um, it's hard to get along with people, you know? So, I mean, I have women in my life, and I have women in my life who I've had sex with, but we just don't do it recently. Because... <laughs> It's too hard to get along with somebody for that, you know, you have to get along with somebody for like at least 10 minutes so you can actually get aroused and have sex. And I just can't seem to get along with somebody for 10 minutes. I mean, and I mean get along with, they don't say something, it just is totally obnoxious and repulsive. Alright, so I guess that's good enough. Uh, when you present your four new questions, are you still going to reply to new videos that pop up regarding the original four? Yes. I always reply to people who are reasonably decent. <sighs> Asshole. I mean, <laughs> you know, these people are just so, uh, you know, I'm just so, so sick of people. You know, I mean, they can't get anything right. It's like, you know, I'm, I, I, I've been having, you know, the draft science thing, I've been arguing with Hawthorne and Piero, and, and, you know, but that's so, so a commenter, and I think even Piero brought it up, and it was like, it's just such a stupid thing. You know, they, they talk about how, well, you can't call that Ken guy a fat ass and expect him to have a conversation. No, that's not how it happened. I was very polite to the Ken guy. I even entered pictures in his photo contest, and I was just trying to get him to accept debate. I told him very politely, I'd like to explain to you what a field is, <laughs> and do all that. And um, he blocked me. And then when I made videos to him, he... Um, disregarded me as some long-haired weirdo who's who, naked guy because I wasn't wearing a shirt. So I wasn't somebody even worth him having to acknowledge existing. So that's how it went. I didn't insult Ken. Ken just did what Ken typically does, which is he picks on people who he won't let fight back. So they're either dead or he's blocked them. <laughs> yeah, because he's just such a pussy. But anyway, but yeah, people never pay any attention to the facts. So, just really, I just hate people. So some other asshole posts something like this. See, see, these kind of comments are just never work for me, guys, people. Who is the master who makes the green, the grass green, question mark? And you think I'm going to be bothered with that? You think I have nothing better in my time than, you know, cut that link out and go find out what this stupid thing is a reference to? No. If you can't, if you can't, if you're going to post a link and you're not going to say what the link is, I mean, even this. Want to, I want a chance to get some extra cash? Question mark, LOL, these guys want to be debunked. I don't even, you got to do better than that. Yeah, as I, I, you know, jokes. I don't. I, I have. I, I have absolutely no patience for. No patience. <sighs> Fuck. Damn assholes. Anyway, uh, so anyway, I guess that's enough. And so forth and whatnot. <sighs> yeah. I don't think there's anything else I have to get to at this moment. I can always make another video later about something else, but... Yeah, I'm just thinking. Um, you know, so I'm not making videos while I'm thinking. And I'm trying to do some physics stuff and trying to figure out how to... I mean, you can't argue with re uh, religious nuts, and it looks pretty clear that physics is just a religion. And uh, it's pretty depressing. Anyway, till next time.